Armored Core 2, 2000. The One Expansion, Another Age, 2001. Armored Core 2 is a Western PS2 launch title, while the Japanese release came out not very long after the console over there. These are indirect sequels to the original PS1 trilogy, as in whatever story that happened in those games is barely noticeable here. Once again, there's barely a plot going on. People came up with the idea to go to Mars, so instead of having war on Earth, they just moved their fighting to the Red Planet. Again, again, you are just some guy who wants to join the Ravens, a mercenary group who will do any job so long as the pay is good. The very first piece of gameplay you get to do is a mission that's supposed to determine whether or not you get to join the Ravens. In another age, you just get thrown into the hub menu after selecting new game or transferring your AC2 save file. Both games are just about you getting hired by corporations to defend against or fuck their opponents up. Again. That is, until near the end of the original game where World is at Stake stuff happens. For all the protagonists may care though, he just did it because a lot of money was involved. Meanwhile, Another Age has even less of a story than AC2 does, as all it is, all the way to the very end, is just rivaling corporations and a rebel faction killing one another, and hiring you to help, even if you just helped the opposing faction two minutes ago. There's not even a mail system anymore. Immediately after the final mission of this expansion, you just get a thanks for playing message. While the expansion story is near non-existent, it is perhaps the largest Armored Core game so far, having 100 missions and 3 bonus challenge ones if you complete all 100, whereas the base game is puny in comparison at less than 40. Transitioning from the PS1 game cinematic 15 or whatever FPS into the PS2 60 FPS feels really fucking good. You're never going to run into a section where the frame rate drops, except maybe on extremely rare occasions where too many missiles launch or explode at once. Both AC2 and Another Age play exactly the same as the PS1 games, Kingsfield controls with the D-pad movement and all that. They don't teach you how to play either, and leave you to learn the controls on your own through the options, manual, or experimentation again. There's a little explanation menu thing in the hub menu that teach you about the features in the game, but it's probably best to learn things through first-hand experience with how information dumpy it can get. Despite dual analog sticks being a thing for years at the time of these games release, they only make use of the L3 and R3 buttons for some new gameplay features. There's movement with the left analog stick, but with how the game plays, it's extremely shit to use and you're better off going back to the D-pad for the movement. Customization is still these games' best feature with how vast and viable most any type of AC build is. Of course, customization itself is limited early on with how poor you'll be then, and that you can't transfer your PS1 progress over here. You can succeed with lightweight builds, medium, heavy, use traditional guns, energy weapons, explosives, replace your arms entirely with weapons, an extreme mix of different kinds of weaponry. You can choose to be something farther from a mech altogether if you want. New to this series are the inside and extension parts. The inside parts are supposed to be things that fuck with enemy radars and place bombs, but I never understood how to use them properly as I kept getting hit anyway, and dealing damage with them felt too unreliable so I stopped bothering. The extensions are a lot easier to understand and work with since they're either just automatic missile interceptors or something that makes your AC boost to a specific direction at the press of a button. You even get a 3 loadout option now, though that's not actually too useful until very late game and the expansion. You can also customize the UI to an extent, though half of what you can fill the screen with is pretty useless, especially in the expansion where some features just outright no longer work, yet are there to be toggled anyway. The shop still acts like a second storage than an actual shop too, in that you can buy or sell anything at the exact same price as when you bought or sold them. Customizing in and of itself, overall, is far less of a chore than in the PS1 games. The menus go by a little faster, you earn more money, and they actually tell you how much higher or lower the numbers are compared to your currently equipped parts. At least on the initial screen. The missions play out like the previous games. Objectives are simply just kill everything, destroy this, defend these, just go from A to B. Sometimes it changes mid-mission to spice things up, but those moments are rare. They can be fun, but they're also susceptible to being dull and mindless. I found myself not getting as lost within the long maps here like in the PS1 games, either thanks to the PS2 graphics actually making sections of maps more easily distinguishable, map designs being made to actually be tolerable, or maybe both.
Mission grading is still based on AC repairs and ammo cost, depending on the ammo type spent. This time, for certain missions, you get to see your bonus rewards and deductions with a little more detail. In another age, the missions have a bad habit of being really annoying because of how reliant they are in knowing what you're supposed to do before even starting. Sometimes, its missions want you to use specific AC builds or equipment, which that itself is kind of fine as it encourages you to not use the same build constantly if you've been relying on one too much. My real problem is that at other times, they need you to know beforehand what the mission is actually about. Like for example, you were supposed to rush the map because of a time limit but no timer was visible, even though there are actual time missions with actual visible timers. Or that to destroy a train, they don't tell you that you were supposed to destroy every car and not just the front, because doing that won't stop the whole train for some reason. All this means is that for like half the missions you'll be doing in this expansion, you'll be repeating them not because they were hard, or even that you didn't go in with the right build necessarily, but because you didn't know a tiny little required detail beforehand until you actually stepped foot into the mission. And with the expansion having 100 plus 3 missions, shit like that can get really exhausting combined with the bullshit enemy ACs you have to fight. Money has become a lot easier to acquire in this game, as mission rewards get really large a little after early game. You still can't repeat missions to farm credits until you've beaten the game you're currently on, but there probably won't be a need for that with how large the money reward can get. The lower rank rewards in the arena are terribly minuscule, however the higher rank rewards are extremely massive so if you're good at AC building and enemy AI exploding, you can make the early to mid game missions a lot more convenient by beating the entire arena very early in the game. I guess to make room for its loads of missions, the arena isn't present in the expansion. Just like the older games, you can still go into negative currency or go into depth by constantly using up certain types of ammo and having a very high repair cost. The same method to get out of that debt is the same as before, either do better in future missions or go into negative currency of 50,000 credits and then immediately failing a mission to undertake a returning feature, the human plus mechanic, where you get a permanent upgrade at the other cost of having to restart the game from the very beginning with your credits resetting to zero. You can do this and get upgrades a certain amount of times to get stronger. While I'm not against the upgrades themselves, I have always been against the method of acquiring them. With how bullshit much of the enemy AC fights get, at least the ones in the expansion, I probably recommend learning about and getting these upgrades very early on as a countermeasure. Combat's still the same basic third-person shooter thing where you shoot enemies as soon as they get close enough to be locked on. You're still running, jumping, and boosting from side to side to hopefully avoid some enemy bullets. The lock-on mechanic is a lot less obnoxious in this game. You still lock onto enemies that are behind obstacles, but at least here the enemies are spaced out enough for you to far less likely target what you don't want during heated moments. Usually anyway. It's even gotten a new function. If a target is locked on for at least a whole second, targeting automatically leads depending on where the enemy is moving, provided of course you stay locked on. It has input reading basically, because the AC enemy's lock on mechanic works the same way against you when you press certain buttons the moment before they fire off shots. There's still no good way to change targets without just moving the targeting thing manually though. Enemies that are airborne are still generally annoying to deal with, always getting behind you and making you slow turn or wait until they get in front of your targeting side again. The AI is so stupid to the point where they can get stuck trying to get behind you. At least the missiles here are a lot more reliable than in the PS1 games against them. Although whatever story these games have are related to the original PS1 trilogies, if just hardly, I really wouldn't recommend making this anyone's first Armored Core game. The difficulty spike early on is pretty high compared to the early game of the first Armored Core. Ironic though that with Another Age, its early missions are actually extremely beginner friendly, and halfway through is where its difficulty starts getting seriously bullshit. At least against other AC units because of how often they fucking fly and boost around to try to get behind you. They're so insistent on it trying to flank you that they can get stuck doing that. And in the base game's arena, you can exploit that behavior to ring them out. There were always a lot of bullshit in the early Armored Core games, and these games are no exception. Because you never really know what going into a mission will pit you against, there's a strong chance you'll do the mission over again simply because of some dumb shit. Like, an invisible timer just started. You didn't know you were supposed to bring lots of ammo. Your AC can't be heavy for this mission, even though these other missions tell you that as a precaution. The awkward terrain made you fall to your death. These are all really prevalent in another age. 
With the improved lock-on mechanic, it makes targeting easier for you and ridiculously accurate for the enemy AI. The enemy ACs are designed to fly at high speeds and keep their targeting thing on you at all times. Where a regular person can have a hard time seeing their target while flying around, the enemy AI always has their sights on you even when boosting mid-air, or when there's a large obstacle between you and them, correcting their aim perfectly if it even slightly goes off. On top of that, I think at least half of them are decked out with the Human Plus upgrades. The AC AI is at least somewhat tolerable within large, open and empty maps, like in some arena maps or missions where the whole place is just flat land. You can actually dodge them properly, as awkward as dodging is in Armored Core with the bunny hopping and rhythmically timed boosts. It makes me think that these types of enemies were absolutely not designed for regular missions where the terrain can fuck with you and them. The basic enemies AI are stupid as fuck too, but they are at least generally tolerable with how fast they die. The cool music is still here, though not as upbeat as I'd have liked most of the songs to be. At least Another Age has that going for it. There are some other new mechanics introduced, like the temperature management stuff, but I stopped paying attention to that after early game since overheating is just as equivalent to taking regular damage, meaning you should either just don't get hit or you should be getting hit less. The Moonlight Sword makes an appearance in the base game as a hidden item, and is once again the strongest blade you could get. However, a stronger blade becomes available as a mission reward later in the expansion. Armored Core 2 maybe takes like 8-10 to 10 hours to beat. The expansion takes much longer due to the amount of missions there are. AC2 is pretty nice, especially if you like the original PS1 games with how much smoother it is to control everything in comparison. I guess Another Age is good as well in some way, but it's very susceptible to inflicting fatigue with how lengthy that expansion is and how bullshit a lot of the missions and AC fights get. I did feel actual satisfaction when doing the last three bonus missions where you fight callback bosses, knowing that they were specifically designed to be post-game challenges, so I at least ended the expansion on a bit of a high note. 